All right, doing another one on um, one of the small amps I picked up in a local trade. This is, I think, the last of the Chris amps. And I do believe the uh, biggest of the Chris amps. I think this is the biggest they made. Um, they also made one called a 600. And this one is a Mach 3 plus 3. And they almost look identical to me, you know, with the schematics. I don't have a 600 to look at the actual amp, but I'm looking, I looked at the schematics and this and the 600 look identical, you know, at least schematic wise. So, um, another basic amp, um, just have a uh, main power on, standby off and on, uh, filament or power on light, and then, um, Got a transmit RF power indicator light. Um, also has a meter uh, indicates relative RF power output. Um, you got a drive tune, a final tune, and a final load. Now that's the way it's supposed to be um, with a uh, drive tune, you know, on the front of it and the load on the front. Um, makes it a lot easier to tune an amp. You know, one of the other ones I looked at had the final load uh, underneath uh, to, you know, change the load. So when you're tuning and loading that amp, you actually needed to um, take the cover off and go underneath to tune and load it up correctly, which I didn't like. But, um, you know, they kind of fixed that with this one with the um, three tuners on the front. And this one is one drive and three. Um, 1.6 JU6 small um, sweet tube driving three this time 6 LQ6 um, tubes uh, most of the other one had the uh, smaller ones had one driving two 6 LQ6 and some of them had one driving two 6 JU6s the smaller tubes and then uh, some had no driver just two 6 JU6s um, so none of them are, you know, really big powerhouses, but this is the biggest one they made. Um, has a heftier transformer than the other ones, but other than that, the components are, you know, pretty similar. Uh, you know, you don't need to change a lot around to, you know, add a tube and get, you know, uh, uh, another 100 watts or 150 watts out of it. But they would need to beef up the transformer. That little 200 watt transformer and the other ones wouldn't you know handle one drive and three so they did beef up the tranny and it this one's been recapped um i think somebody already had put an updated fan in it i think or if not chris did it they self i don't know who this one has a keyer tube a um tube to operate the relay behind it a tube keying circuit so i call that a keyer tube yeah, we're going to set the camera down and uh, flip her around. We are off, yep. And there is something weird about this amp still. Um, it's got these um, three variable capacitors. You know, one right here, one here, and one there. And each of them is like on the input of the final tubes. But it's also like the load on the driver tube, like the output of the driver and the input of the finals are kind of tied, tied together. And it's got a individual variable cap for each tube. So you kind of tune in each tube um, on the input, basically. Not the input for the radio or the input SWR for the radio, but the, in, but the um, input of the final tubes. So it won't affect, you know, input or output SWR. But you kind of fine-tune each tube. Um, and I guess um, since it's not the output tune, which changes when you change antennas or the rain and your SWR change and, and all that stuff, um, since this basically goes to the input of the uh, finals, then unless you change the tubes that um, adjustment doesn't need adjusting so well, I can see that it's just I never saw one with um, a variable capacitor to the grids input grid of the final tubes like that before individual and um, 
that's actually the half voltage power supply going to the driver tube. The, this amp runs at about a thousand volts, a little bit higher than your normal ones. So it's got um, those two caps going to the 500 volt supply center tap of the um, transformer to run the small driver tube about 500. And that's going to be it under here. We're going to flip it back around again. This one has a little weight to it too compared to the other ones. And over here, these three caps, because again it runs at a thousand volts, this one. So, you know, these are 450 volt caps. So two of them would only give you a 900 volt rating. So it actually has three caps in series. Um to give you what's uh, 459, 1350, you know, safety rating as far as, you know, handling that thousand volts. So, three caps in series for the power supply for the high voltage thousand volt that goes to these tubes. So, I guess that's about all I wanted to show with this one. Um, oh, also, I'm running the um, Tram D201 that I got going into this one. Um, this one wasn't doing a heck of a lot with just the little uh, Tram Titan behind it radio running because that radio is only doing one watt. And this one wanted to be hit just a little bit harder, but not too hard. So this Tram here is dead can, you know, four watts, but it's swinging to about uh, uh, 15, 17 watts on average, probably 30 peak watts going into this. And uh, it liked it a little more. Um, probably if I was going to try to perfect this and keep this amp, I'd want to dead key like 2 watts and swing up to about 15, you know, give it a little more swing, not 4, but anyway, I'm just doing a demo on it and uh, I wanted to show the full capability of this Chris instead of, you know, bogging it down with a 1 watt, you know, and that Tram Titan 4 probably only swings to about 6, 7 watts max, so that wasn't quite enough to uh, hit the Chris very hard, so anyway we ought to be warmed up I hope and hopefully still tuned up um, you know power on and standby on so hopefully we're ready to go so uh, we do have the uh, watt meter here hooked between the radio and the amp so that's going to show input power and it's showing we're dead can 2.7 watts with a uh, 2.1 SWR. That's uh, the input SWR going into the amp. We're going to turn the amp on standby and just show you the difference just going into the dummy load that this radio is actually doing three and a quarter there. And if we took the amp out of line and you know kind of went straight to the dummy load, it would kick up to four or if we retuned it. But we're not you know trying to retune the tram and 1.1 SWR and probably took the amp out going into a dummy load it'd go down to a 1.0 so anyway let's do a audio audio so I'm talking about 710 watts <whistles> with this probably would do even more um, well let's show it on the uh, MFJ meter on average two and a half watts getting to the uh, meter audio audio <whistles> whistling about 10 and then that's on average and then on peak audio audio doing about 17 18 and if I peaked up the tram but the peaks the tune and load for the tram were in the back I probably could hit 30 but not gonna do that and I guess last we're gonna turn the amp on and go to the 200 watt scale and take it off average so we're dead keying about 160 there trying to get the mic situated hello audio audio and we're talking we're about standing still just bouncing around a little bit whistling we putting it in the corner and that's on average with this little uh, Chris hello with the 4 watt radio going into it 
Now when we had the little uh, Tram Titan 4 one watt going into it, we were dead keen about um, 70 instead of 180 and that's why I didn't um, want to run it and it was only swinging to about um, to about 150 on um, RMS and with the um, Tram Titan going into it, it was doing um, 290 on peak. So over here, we're on the 2000 watt scale, still on average. So dead keen about 190. It's showing a little bit of forward swing on average. Whistling to about 260. And last, we're going to put it on peak. Audio, audio, audio. Doing about 340 peak audio audio with the uh, Titan 4 with you know a lot less watts going into it it was peaking out at about uh, 290 so hitting it a little harder I don't like the harder dead key but I do like it swinging to at least 300 340 peak with the tram driving it so that's gonna be it just showing the uh, biggest Chris that they made the uh, mark 3 by 3 with uh, one driving three six LQ sixes doing what it's supposed to do the book says that um, it'll do 300 out and um, 600 watts in if you know about input watts versus output watts you only get about half of what you put in um, going out you know it's efficiency that um, two amps are about 50 percent efficiency and from the book, um, even the one they called a 600, it's 600 watts input, and you get about 300 out. So I just wanted to show it's doing that, doing what it's supposed to do, good tubes. And that's going to be it for the crisp, probably the last of the crisps, crisps for me for a while. All right, stay safe out there. Bye.